defeated almost every enemy he's gone up against. But what would happen if he fought the Straw Hats? Would he destroy them, or would some of the stronger members beat him? Well, I've split Luffy into five power levels, so let's start with Luffy's weakest form. Can he even defeat one Straw Hat? Now, this first level of Luffy has zero experience, meaning that any of the Straw Hats can destroy him. But there is one member he might have a chance against, because Nami's lightning attacks might look strong, but Luffy has a secret ability that can cancel her powers. See, Luffy's rubber body is naturally resistant to electricity, so if Nami attacks him with lightning, he won't get injured. And then we'll just smack her in the face to win the fight. So for level one of Luffy's five forms, Luffy would lose to every straw hat except Nami. And if we move up to level two, he's got a huge power boost, meaning that now two of the straw hats are in trouble. So what happens if this version of Luffy fights his crew members? Well, even if we start out with the weakest straw hat, Usopp, he'll still be able to do more damage than Nami could. See, the fight would start with Usopp immediately sprinting away, knowing that the only way he can win is by keeping his distance from Luffy. After achieving this step, Usopp would use his sniper ability to launch fast attacks, and these tactics definitely would have beat level one Luffy. However, against level two, things change completely because of Luffy's upgraded powers. Because even if Usopp snipes from a distance and uses the observation hockey power to predict Luffy's moves, he won't be able to keep up for one huge reason. Luffy's just too fast. You see, level two Luffy unlocks Gear Second, which gives him the access to game-changing abilities, including Soru, a technique that lets him move faster than the human eye. So while Usopp will be able to predict Luffy's movements, he won't be fast enough to react, meaning that Luffy can easily close the distance between them and then use his close-up strength to crush Usopp, making level two Luffy the winner of this battle. Next, we have Luffy's fight against Chopper. And in this battle, Chopper is immediately at a disadvantage. Remember, Chopper isn't a fighter, he's a doctor. So even a thousand episodes into the show, he isn't that strong. But he does have a powerful ability, AKA his monster point form, which allows him to transform into a giant beast and deal out massive damage. So he can at least put up a fight against this version of Luffy, right? Well, no. See, Luffy's super speed is gonna make it very hard for Chopper to keep up, but level two Luffy also unlocked another ability called Gear Third. And this one seals the deal because it basically makes Luffy just as strong as Chopper's monster form, if not stronger. With these two abilities, Luffy will run circles around Chopper and then use Gear Third to deliver the killing blow. Unfortunately, this is the end of level two Luffy's winning streak because the moment he tries to fight stronger straw hats like Brooke and Robin, he'll quickly find out that his abilities are nothing compared to what they've got. Meaning that of the nine straw hats, level two Luffy only wins against three. Now this is where things get interesting because level three Luffy is finally strong enough to start taking down the more powerful straw hats. Nami, Usopp, and Chopper are already out of the picture. But what happens when this version of Luffy goes against Brooke, the most talented straw hat so far? Well, right off the bat, Brooke has three main powers that make him Luffy's toughest opponent. First, he can use the cold aura of the soul to freeze Luffy solid, meaning that Luffy can't use his super speed to avoid any of Brook's attacks. Second, one of Brook's abilities is also Luffy's biggest weakness, a sword. See, Luffy's Devil Fruit is a very defensive ability, so any attack-based power like a sword is deadly to him. And third, even if Luffy somehow manages to unfreeze himself, Brook has insane super speed, meaning that he can keep up and perhaps even be faster than Luffy. All this makes it pretty obvious why level one and two of Luffy couldn't win against Brook. But can Brook still keep his winning streak against level three Luffy? Well, unfortunately, it's not gonna be that easy. See, this next form of Luffy gets an insane power upgrade. Cause in addition to having stronger gear second and third, level three Luffy also has hockey, a power that lets him use spiritual energy as a weapon. Now in the show, the author has made it clear that hockey always beats devil fruit powers, even if the devil fruit is super strong. This means that Brook's freezing ability won't work anymore, and Luffy will be able to use Hockey as armor against Brook's sword. So with all of Brook's weapons now useless, there's no chance he could even put a scratch on his captain. But with all this said, Brook does have a secret ability he can resort to. He's already dead. So if Luffy punches him into pieces, his soul will just pull all the pieces back together, meaning that Brook technically can't beat level three but he can't lose either. 
later in the video, we're gonna make the strongest straw hats like Zoro and Sanji fight against Luffy. But first, what would happen if Luffy fought Frankie? Now this fight is different because Frankie is the only straw hat who relies on inventions. And of these inventions, the two deadliest are Frankie's robot suit and his powerful radical beams. These abilities would easily destroy Luffy at level 1 and 2. But for level 3, it's gonna be harder than you might think. Just like Brooke, Frankie is gonna have a hard time winning because in the show, we saw this version of Luffy easily dodging Frankie's lasers. So already, Frankie's strongest attack doesn't work anymore. And if Luffy uses an attack like Grizzly Magnum, he'll destroy Frankie's robot, leaving him completely defenseless. Meaning that for the very next attack, Frankie will die. Now unfortunately, level 3 Luffy can't beat the rest of the Straw Hats because he's missing a crucial ability something that he doesn't unlock until level 4. Now this ability is gear 4, but instead of explaining it, let's see what would happen if level 4 Luffy fought Robin. And it's gonna be a tough fight, because Robin has two powerful attacks that are going to crush level 4 Luffy at first. See, Robin will activate Demonio Le Fleur, a form where she leans into her demonic nature and turns into a giant devil. With this, Robin can sprout tons of giant limbs, making her insanely fast and strong. Now you might say that Luffy can counter by activating Armament Hockey, a power that creates spiritual armor around him. But Robin's second technique will beat this defense, because by using a power called Fishman Karate Strikes, Robin is able to injure Luffy from the inside, making his armor hockey useless. With all these powers combined, Robin would destroy Luffy in the first half of their fight. But after realizing her true power, Luffy would pull out an ability that he only has at level 4, Gear 4. As you might know, this ability brings Luffy to crazy high power levels, allowing him to use his strongest form so far, Bound Man. This ability specializes in offense and defense, which means that Robin's Karate Strikes won't do as much damage anymore. And by using King Kong Gun, Luffy will break through Robin's remaining defenses without a sweat, meaning that Robin loses to level 4 Luffy. Now that was a close fight, but uh, Luffy's fight against Jinbei is gonna be even closer. See, Jinbei's like the most overpowered guy. He can use both observation and armor hockey, which automatically makes him stronger than Luffy's previous three levels. But Jinbei has more abilities that might make him stronger than Luffy's level 4 form. First, he's incredibly strong, as shown when he tossed around a Yonko, aka one of the strongest pirates. Second, Jinbei knows Fishman Karate just like Rob meaning that Luffy isn't safe even when using hockey as armor. But Jinbei's strongest power is his endurance. This dude literally fought Ace for five days without having to stop. Now, some people might say level 4 Luffy wins this fight because this form of Luffy was able to beat the pirate Doflamingo while Jinbei couldn't do it. But it's not that simple. See, Luffy had tons of help from others in this fight, and if he had fought Doflamingo alone, he would have been destroyed. So in my opinion, I think that Jinbei is almost exactly exactly as strong as level 4 Luffy, which means that Luffy only takes the win if he can outlast Jinbei. And I think he definitely can, since his fighting spirit is unstoppable. So with enough time, level 4 Luffy is the winner. Now let's get to the good stuff. The two strongest straw hats, Zoro and Sanji versus Luffy. In order to even stand a chance against these two, Luffy needs his current strength, finally leveling up to his strongest form at level 5. Yeah, that's right. Both Sanji and Zoro at their peak can easily defeat the first four levels of Luffy. And this makes sense. I mean, first off, Sanji is definitely the fastest straw hat since he's been shown to move so fast the human eye can't even see him. Even if Luffy uses his gear second super speed, he won't be able to see Sanji, meaning that he'll have to go to level 5 to use gear 5th. You also gotta take Sanji's specialty, Observation Hockey, into account. Although he hasn't been shown using the most powerful version of his ability, he has been seen using basic Observation Hockey at a higher level than Luffy. So combining Sanji's insane speed and Observation Hockey, he'll be able to dodge all of Luffy's attacks and even get a few of his own in. But things get even crazier, because Sanji's latest power-up, E-Freight Jambay, gives him unmatched strength, and with these blue flames, he can literally cook people alive with his kicks. Unfortunately, even with all these attacks combined, Sanji still won't be able to put a scratch on Luffy. 
see Sanji at his very strongest still doesn't have advanced armament hockey, an ability that Luffy does have. And to put things in perspective, if someone without this ability tries to fight someone with it, they always lose. Luffy's the perfect example because he fought Kaido without this ability and got knocked out in one punch. So this is a huge factor going against our favorite cook here. But Sanji can still rely on his durability due to his enhanced exoskeleton. This gives Sanji insane endurance, letting him literally snap his broken bones back into place. The only way to take Sanji down is to exhaust him, since this dude is basically indestructible. When the fight starts, Sanji will immediately be forced onto the defensive. He'll use his speed to dodge Luffy's attacks, but eventually some of them will get through. With his exoskeleton, Sanji will be able to absorb some of the blows, but the damage will start slowing him down. After a while, Sanji will slow down to the point where Luffy can catch him with ease, meaning it's only a matter of time before Sanji tires out and level 5 Luffy takes the win. Now let's get to the matchup we're all here for, Luffy versus his strongest crewmate, Zoro. This is definitely gonna be Luffy's hardest fight, cause just like Luffy, Zoro has all three forms of hockey. You also can't forget that swords are Luffy's natural weakness, meaning that Zoro slashes will do serious damage. But how would he do against Gear 5 Luffy? Well, Zoro has the disadvantage when it comes to speed since he's not as fast as Sanji. However, if Luffy slips up once, Zoro can use an attack like his purgatory onigiri to try and slice up Luffy. Unfortunately for Zoro, Luffy can work around this by changing his size. He can make his body bigger, and a lethal sword wound will end up looking like a tiny paper cut. But here's the thing, even though Zoro is pretty dumb, he's a genius when it comes to fighting. After seeing Luffy do this once, Zoro would adapt and change his method of attack. Instead of fighting up close, Zoro would fight from a distance using his ranged sword slashes to attack Luffy. If Luffy gets hit and tries to go big mode again to counter it, Zoro would take this opportunity to use an attack like his billion-fold world Trichiliacosm to unleash a sword slash big enough to destroy an entire island, leaving Luffy with a big wound for his big body. But those aren't the only abilities Zoro will use, cause his endurance and durability are absolutely insane too. I mean, he survived a combined attack from two Yonkos, the strongest pirates alive. This broke nearly every bone in Zoro's body, yet he was still able to keep fighting. So safe to say, it would take Luffy a while to take down Zoro, and he'll have to keep his guard up the entire time, since one good slash from Zoro could end the fight. However, Zoro's control over advanced conquerors hockey isn't as strong as Luffy's, leading to Zoro tiring out much faster. Not to mention, he'll be getting constantly attacked by Luffy's Gear 5, leading to Zoro getting seriously injured. When Zoro realizes he's running out of energy, he'll decide to put everything into one last attack, using his Ajara 9 sword style to unleash his strongest slash. Unfortunately for Zoro, Luffy would fire back with his own attack coated in Conqueror's hockey and cause a sky-splitting explosion. After this, Zoro won't have any energy left. He'll either pass out or get knocked out by Luffy, making Luffy undefeated against his crew. So Luffy can officially demolish his entire crew in a one-on-one -on -one battle. But what if the entire crew fought him at the same time? Well, things would go worse than you think. See, this is the first time that some of the Straw Hats will be fighting Luffy's strongest form, and for many of them, they won't be able to do any damage. That's how strong he is. Like, Chopper won't even participate in the battle since the rest of the crew will need him on doctor duty. Meanwhile, Usopp, Robin, Frankie, and Nami will all be on support duty attacking from afar. The thing is, Luffy's naturally immune to Nami's attacks, and the rest of them don't have the hockey or the firepower to hurt Luffy, so they won't do much damage. Brooke will be running around trying to get Luffy's attention by cutting him, although the cuts will be surface level. Since Brooke's immortal, he'll basically serve as a decoy, getting Luffy's attention, taking a hit, pulling himself back together, and repeating. But that doesn't really change much, since Luffy would just turn gigantic and hit the entire crew with a humongous punch, knocking out everyone but Zoro, Sanji, and Jinbei. Zoro and Jinbei would attack from the ground, while Jinbei stays in front of Luffy, taking the brunt of the attacks, while Zoro would be attacking from the sides, forcing Luffy to block with his advanced conqueror's hockey. Meanwhile, Sanji would be flying around in the air, hitting Luffy with super fast kicks, then moving before Luffy can react. However, this can only go on for so long since Luffy is so powerful that Jinbei, Zoro, and Sanji can't just keep on eating hits. And one by one, they would start falling until just Luffy is left standing. 
So yeah, definitely a good thing Chopper stayed behind to nurse everyone back to health. While Chopper's taking care of the straw hats, click this video to see One Piece Easter eggs you definitely missed.